Live from the Javits Center in New York City, it's theCUBE, covering Inforum 2017. Brought to you by Infor. Welcome to day two of theCUBE's live coverage of Inforum 2017 here in New York City at the Javits Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Dave Vellante, and Jim Kobelius, who is the lead analyst at Wikibon for AI. So we're, we're here in day two, fellas. We just heard the keynote. Um, any, any thoughts on what your expectations are for today, Jim, and, and what you're hoping to uncover, or at least get more insight on what we learned already in day one? I'd like to have Infor unpack a bit more of the Coleman announcement. I wrote a blog last night that I urge um, our listeners to check out on wikibon.com. Uh, um, there's a number of unanswered issues in terms of their strategy going forward to incorporate Coleman AI and their technology. You know, I suspect that Infor, like most companies, is working out that strategy as they go along, piece by piece. They've got a good framework. That, but we had Duncan Angove on um, at, right after this segment, and Dave and I and you will we'll grill Duncan on that and much more. But that in particular, you know, I mean, AI is great. Every, AI is everybody's secret sauce now. There's a lot of substance behind what they're doing it in for that sets them apart from their competitors in the ERP space. I want to go deeper there. So, so yes. Yeah, so, so I'm looking at the blog right now. But what are the particular questions that you have regarding Coleman in terms of how it's going to work? Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to know: Do they intend to to incorporate Coleman AI in their premises-based software offerings? You know, for mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure the vast majority of their customers want to know when, if ever, they're going to get access to Coleman. Number one. Um, number two is. When are they going to complete the process of incorporating Coleman in their, you know, their cloud suite portfolio, which is vast and detailed? And then really number three, um, are they going to do all the R&D themselves? I mean, they've got AWS as a major partner. AWS has significant intellectual property in AI. Will they call on others to work with them on co-developing these capabilities? You know, those are like the high level things that I want to get out of today. Okay, okay. Well, so a couple things. So, I mean, the, the keynote today was, was okay. It wasn't like mind-blowing. Um, we had customer appreciation, which was great. Uh, Alexis, who was from Foot Locker, Cube alum, was up there, and B of A got customer of the year. I met uh, those guys last night at uh, one, of the, one of the customer appreciation dinners. So that was kind of cool. Uh, they all got plaques, or you know, that's, <laughs> that's nice little trophies. I heard a lot about design thinking, and they shared some screenshots, essentially, of this new UI, Start talking about AI is the new UI. Mm -hmm. It was very reminiscent of the conversation that we had in May at the ServiceNow Knowledge Conference where they're bringing consumer-like experience to the enterprise. It's always been something that ServiceNow is focused on and certainly Charles Phillips and Hook and Loop have been focused on that. The difference is, quite frankly, that you know, ServiceNow showed an actual demo, got a lot of you know, claps as a result. Uh, in, Infor said this is you know, ready to, to be tested and downloaded. Uh, but they didn't show any demo. So that was sort they of like, shown any hmm, yeah. is, it really, is it really baked out? Um, Steve Lucas was up there, he killed it. Very high energy guy, you know, again, another CUBE alum. <laughs> he's been in our studio and he's, he's, he's awesome. an awesome dude. Yeah, and uh, and he, I thought he did a really From good Marketo. job. Uh, talking about, you know, the whole engagement economy. Uh, you know, we, we think it's going a little bit beyond engagement to more action, yeah. systems of an action, I think, uh, or I think is a uh, term you guys systems use. Systems of agency or enablement, yeah, but yeah. yeah. So, bringing more of the IOT into it and robotics and so forth. Yeah. And then DSW was up there, I said yesterday I love DSW, I tweeted out that you know, they, they just, the, the CIO had a picture, Ashley had a picture of DSW, and I said okay, when the girls and I go to DSW, I break left, they go middle <laughs> right, we meet at the checkout to negotiate what actually goes home, so that was good, that was kind of fun. Um, and then a lot of talk about digital transformation, Mark Scabelli was talking about that, and IOT and AI and data. So that's sort of, you know, kind of a summary there. As you know, Rebecca, I've been kind of trying to make the math work on the two plus billion dollar mm -hmm. investment yes, from this Coke. Is your and the messaging that Infor is putting forth is this, this, this is a, a, a source of new capital for us, but I'm, you You're know, skeptical. as a private company, they have the right not to divulge everything. And they're not on a 90 day shot clock. Charles Phillips, I think, said yesterday, we're on a 10 year shot clock, mm -hmm. so okay. I think what happened is, so I, found, I scanned 10 Qs, and I've been doing so for the last couple of days, there's virtually no information about how much exactly the cash went in and what they're doing with it. And so I suspect, but, but there are references to 
Golden Gate Capital and, the, and some of the management team taking some money off the table, cool, that's good. I'm just, it's unclear to me that there's any debt being retired, I think there is none, and it's unclear to me how much cash there is for the business. So I, the only reference I was able to find, believe it or not, was on Wikipedia, and it says citation still needed. Mm. Okay, and the number here, and the math works, is 2.68 billion for 66.6% .6 of the company, and a valuation of 10 billion, which Charles Phillips told us off camera yesterday, it was 10.5 billion. So you can actually make the math work if you take that 10 billion and subtract off the six billion dollars in debt, then the numbers work. And they get five out of, uh, out of 11 board seats, so they've got about 45% or 49%, I think is the actual right, number, right. you know, voting control of the company. So here's the question, is what's next? And now, a couple billion for Coke is nothing. It's like the money in my pocket. Right, I mean, right, it's, right. it's really, yeah, exactly. and, and so, um, and I, I suspect what happened is, because it always says two billion plus, so in squinting through this, my guess is, this is a pure guess, we'll try to confirm this, is that what happened is Coke provided the additional funding to buy Burst recently, that upped their share to 66%, to and maybe that's how Coke is going to operate going forward. When they see opportunities to help invest, they're going to do that. Now, one might say, well, that's going to further dilute uh, the, the existing in four shareholders, but who cares? As long as the valuation goes up, and that's the new model of private equity. The old model of private equity is suck as much cash out of the company as possible and leave the carcass for somebody else to deal with. The new model of private equity is to invest selectively, use, I mean, essentially what is a, a zero interest loan, that six billion dollar debt is like free money for in four, pay down that debt over time with the cash flow of the company, and then raise the valuation of the company, and at some point have some kind of exit, public market exit, and everybody's happy, it makes a ton of dough. So I think that's the new private equity play, and I, I think it's quite brilliant, actually, but there's not a lot of information, so a lot of this, have to be careful, is speculation on my part. Right, right. Well, the thing is, will the Coleman plan initiative raise the valuation of the company in the long term, if it's you know, an attrition war in ERP, and they've got SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, all of whom have deep pockets, deeper than M4, investing heavily in this stuff. Will Coleman be a net, net just table stake? Yeah, so, you know? well, so I think, again, there's, there's a couple ways in the tech business, as you guys know, yeah. to make money, and one is to invest in R&D and translate that R&D into commercial products. And, and some companies are really good at that, some companies aren't so good at that. The other way to make money is to do you know, acquisitions and tuck-ins, and many, many companies have built value doing that. Certainly Oracle, certainly IBM has, EMC back in the day with its VMware acquisition hit probably the biggest home run ever. And Infor has done a very good job of M&A and, and I think clearly has raised the value of, of the company. And the other way is to you know, resell technologies and you know, generate cash and keep your costs low. I think a software company has the opportunity, like Infor, has the opportunity to, in, to innovate, to do tuck-in acquisitions, and to drive software marginal economics. So I think on paper, that's all good if, to answer your question, they can differentiate, and their differentiation is their, the way in which they're embedding AI into their deep, vertical, you know, last mile approach, and that is unique in the software mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. now, the, other, the other big question you have is beautiful UIs, and it's, it sounds really great, and looks really great. Well, when you talk to the customers, they say, yeah, it's a little tough to implement sometimes. So it's still ERP, yes. and ERP is yes. complicated. Right? So, you know, it's not like Infor is, um, shielded from some of the complexities of Oracle uh, and SAP. It might look prettier, they might be moving a little faster in certain areas, they might, they clearly have some differentiation. At the end of the day, it's still complicated enterprise software. Right, exactly, and we, we heard that over and over again from, from, from the people, from Infor themselves and also from customers, is that it isn't seamless, it's complicated, it involves a lot of change, man, change management initiatives, um, people have to be on board, and, and that's not always easy. Well, and that's why I'm encouraged that to see some of the larger SIs, you know, you see Grant Thor Thornton, Capgemini, I think Accenture's here. We're having Deloitte, Capgemini later on. Deloitte's coming program. on as well, mm -hmm. and, and so, those guys, even though I always joke they love to eat at the trough <laughs> and do big complex things, um, but this is maybe not as, as, as lucrative as some of the other businesses, but it's, it's clearly a company with momentum and, a and some tailwind that in the context of digital transformations and AI, the big SIs and some of the smaller SIs, you know, like AVAP that we had on yesterday, can, can 
do pretty well and actually help companies and customers add value. And with a fellow like Charles Phillips at the helm, I mean, he is just an impressive person who, who as you have pointed out multiple times, is a real visionary mm. when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, except when he's shooting hoops. He's not impressive. No, <laughs> oh. I tweeted out last night, he's got Obama's physique, but not his hoop game. Oh. You know, so don't hate me for yeah. saying that, Charles. But, uh, but yes, he's, I think he's, first of all, he's a software industry guru. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he, you know, single-handedly changed, I shouldn't say that single-handedly, but he catalyzed the major change in the software business when, you know, Oracle went on its acquisition spree and he architected that whole thing. And it was interesting to hear his comments yesterday about what he sees. He said, I see a lot more, I will, you'll see a lot more tech industry CEOs running non-tech mm -hmm. industry companies because they're all becoming SaaS companies. And once they, they if they have been so invested in understanding the vertical, they, they, they really get it. You can, re you can see someone who worked on a retail vertical here going in and being the CEO of Target or Walmart or something. Yeah, so I thought that was a pretty interesting mm. comment from mm -hmm. somebody who's got some mm -hmm. chops in, in that business. And again, very impressive. I mean, the acquisitions that this company has done and continues to do. I, you and I both like the Burst acquisition. Oh it's, yeah. Um, it's modern day BI, it's not sort of just viz, and I, I don't mean to, to, to deposition Click and, and, and Tableau, they've done a great job, you know, but it's not a, it, it, it doesn't solve all your enterprise grade, you know, BI sort of problems. Um, and, you know, you talk to the Cognos customer base, as great of an acquisition as that was for IBM, that is a big, chewy, heavy lift that IBM's trying to inject Watson and Watson Analytics. I mean, you know, you used to work at IBM, Jim, uh, and they're doing a pretty good job of that, improving yeah. the UI, but it's still, you know, big, chunky, Cognos, you know, BI. Yeah. Build cubes, wait for results. Yeah. You know, so. so in many ways, you know, the burst acquisition for Infor in their portfolio is a bit like the thematics that IBM's been putting out on HTAP, you know, injecting analytics into transactional processing to make them more agile and so forth. What I like about the burst acquisition vis-a-vis -vis Coleman and where Infor is going is that the burst acquisition gives them a really good team, the people who really know analytics mm -hmm. and how to drive it into, into transactional environments you know, such as this. Um, They've got, I mean, ostensibly a, a, a deep fund of, uh, of, of capital to fund the Coleman development going forward. Plus, they've got a, a really strong plan. Um, I, I think there's, in, with p potential strong differentiators for Infor, far more comprehensive in their plan to incorporate AI across their portfolio than SAP or Oracle or Microsoft have put out there in public. So, I think we're where they're, they're in a good position for growth and innovation. Well, we have a lot of great guests coming up today. Um, yes. As you said, Duncan Ingove is going to be on up next. Yep. So I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante and Jim Kobelius. We will have more from Inforum just after this.